welcome to straight to the point where we get straight to the point as simple as that we talk everything arsenal we talk everything football today's an arsenal panel i've got my brother hooks come on come on how, how are you hooks how you doing bro yeah i'm off from you i'm not doing the you know the classic thing that you do when you like, me, like me yeah like me talk. yesterday yeah yeah <laughs> on the team cool that i'll talk and like oh you're on mute no no i'm blessed man i'm blessed i can't lie the lack the extreme lack of uh arsenal <laughs> is uh yeah it's, it's starting to it's starting to annoy me because like this is how this is how my weekends kind of go yeah well, this is how my weeks kind of go. It's like I spend the whole week, yeah, working, yeah, just mad working, yeah. And then I get to the weekend and it's like, yeah, it's football time now. It's time for time to relax, maybe get a beer, put my feet up, get some snacks, watch the what all the pre build up, all the men on YouTube doing their talks about the game, all the previews. All of that, read the or read all the reports, read all of the articles, all the news, and then watch the Arsenal. And then one of well, recently it's been raw. We've been smoking teams, so I've always been happy afterwards. But sometimes it's like, oh, oh damn, oh, I'm now gonna have to go into work the next week, and people are gonna be like, oh, so what happened to Arsenal on the weekend? And it's like, but you know what? Now, um, now, um. I feel like watching football as an Arsenal fan now, I'm kind of paying more attention to like what Liverpool and Man City are doing. And I'm actually watching their games with a little bit of hatred in my heart and like, oh, I just wishing that, yeah, man, now you man need to lose. Like I'm finding myself supporting <laughs> the teams that they're playing. So uh, that's been an interesting okay. development because I haven't done that before. Well, I haven't actually, I haven't done that since since we was going toe-to-toe with Man United. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I think what it is as well, yeah, like, first things first, We back to what you said about going to work the next day and then people, me, me and you actually live pretty much around the corner from each other. It's not long at all, 20-minute drive or something <laughs> like that. We still haven't met. We need to sort that out. But uh, we live in a, a very Spursy area, bro. Like, there's very <laughs> lot of Spurs and, and Chelsea fans near us and stuff, you know, and then Man United fans that have, I've never been to Manchester, but support Man United. <laughs> yeah. Big London. up Martin. Big up Martin in the in the, in the chat. But yeah, so we're we're from them areas. So we when we lose, it's peak for us. And this is what some people don't get. Like when I was at school, bro. Like when I was at school, there weren't many Arsenal fans in my school. Even though my like, bro, right near London, whatever, just none. They're all Tottenham, Man United, Chelsea. It was crazy. And in my year, anyway. But like um. Yeah, man. But what you said on watching other teams and that, 100% I agree because I'm 100% the same now. Because do you know what it is? When you're doing, when, when your team is shit, and let's be real, when your team is doing shit, they're playing shit, their players are shit, you don't want to watch other teams, bro, because you're just pissed <laughs> about your, they make you, like, bro, your team makes you fall in and out of love with football. You know, yeah. like me personally, I I love football, but like I'm a football fan. And an Arsenal fan. Now, you've got some people that are just a football fan. And I, I envy them people because they can just... what like I, Sometimes I envy Judge, Judge Mo because he can watch the Premier League, yeah, and he can just enjoy the Premier League. Yeah. yeah. Me, there's always something. Every game I watch, there's something that is not... Like, people be like, yeah, it's relaxing to watch a Spurs game. Nice no, not because I'm praying they lose, bruv. Like, <laughs> I, I'm watching it and I get annoyed when they start winning and that, bruv. Real talk. But it's good to be able to watch them and be like, we're doing our thing now. We're doing our thing. It's like I was saying to my boy at work about the Champions League this year. I said, I'm fully invested in the Real Madrid City game because I want Real Madrid to go through. Badly, because if we get through, I want Real Madrid. We're, we're yes. getting Real Madrid, but out of the two, I want Real Madrid. So I'm going to be watching the City-Real game rooting fully for Real. And actually, it's got stakes on it. It's not just watching it and thinking, oh, man, I wish we could be we could be in the Champions League. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, exactly, exactly. But and that's, when you're that's, that's so beautiful. Like, I I don't think I've actually been an Arsenal fan as an adult and been able to experience that feeling. Like, it's a, like, a lot of Arsenal's heyday was when I was in secondary school. Like, and that's, that's, 
ages ago. Like with that's many, many, many moons ago. So My now family. I'm yeah. <laughs> so now it's I'm teacher for me. <laughs> so now I'm an adult and I'm getting to experience Arsenal play in this way and compete at this level. I can appreciate it a lot more because I understand football a lot more now. So it, I'm love I'm loving this. I can't lie, man. Like it's like I said, like I'm I'm happy. Well, okay. I, I actually wanted Real Madrid, um, Barcelona, or Barca. That's that's who I wanted in in this round. So I kind of I still got a big team, and don't get me wrong, <laughs> I went through years and years and years and years of pain and trolling because of what Bayern Munich did to us, the 10-2. I'd, 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 so now I'm like, okay, cool. Didn't get who I wanted, but now got a perfect opportunity, perfect opportunity to exact some revenge. And you get make them feel how we felt back then. And then I get Real Madrid. I don't want Man City. Nah, I'm so I don't I don't want Man City because I, and this is how I've always viewed the Champions League is I'm coming to watch like the best of Europe. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not coming here to watch Arsenal versus Man City or Arsenal versus Man United or Arsenal versus Liverpool. I can watch that in domestic football. I've come to watch Arsenal play the teams that I don't get to watch them play all the time. So yeah, I'm happy with our draw. Um, well, pr- providing Real Madrid win, but I think that they will win because their team is looking a lot more dangerous than what it was last season when Man City faced them. And then equally, I feel like Man City's teams dropped off a bit from where they were last season. So, yeah, man, a Bayern smoke them, a Real Madrid smoke them. Because you know what, yeah, it's it, it's funny. A lot of people, are, don't worry, on the football corner, a lot of people are going to be grilling me if we don't beat Bayern and if we don't beat Real Madrid because I'm Mr. Toxic Positivity. But, yeah, need I remind everybody, yeah, we always, when, when framing against Arsenal, we always talk about heritage and what's happened in the past. Real Madrid have never beaten us before in the Champions League. Fair. We've actually knocked them out before in the Champions League. <laughs> we 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 have we have knocked out Real Madrid before and we had no heritage then when we did it. So why and that Real Madrid team that Real Madrid team was light years ahead <laughs> of, of this current Real Madrid team. So why wouldn't I think that we can beat Real Madrid? So yeah, I don't know, man. I don't yeah, know. listen, hey, listen, I, I... I think we can beat anyone on the day. I think this season we can beat anyone on the day. I do think it's going to be a hard task. I'm happy with Bayern, by the way. Um, I know we talked about it on every stream, the Champions League and that, but like it's been so long that that's why. But I want Bayern, man, because you know what? Yeah. For me, I want to be the nail in the coffin of... Let me just stop this round. We've got Martin in the building. Why what are you saying? Was... You all right? Oh, I just did a really like a long all nighter, so I'm a bit buggered, but uh, yeah, got work done so I can chat a little bit at Arsenal. Yeah, wicked. How's uh, how's everyone saying, doing? I'm... Yeah, we're all good. I'm just saying that I actually wanted Bayern, I actually want to knock Bayern out because after all them years of pain that they caused me, I want to be the final now in that coffin this season of them having a fucking dead season that they ain't had in ages. They're not going to win the league. <laughs> Uh, they're not going to win anything. If we knock them out of the Champions League, that is their last little strand of something that they have for the season. I want to knock them out. I want them gone. Yeah, because I, not only do they have Kane, that 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 also I don't want him winning anything just because I'm an arsehole. But yeah, I just want them out uh, and I want to face Real Madrid. So like, I, I'm listen, it's nice to be able to say we, we, we're we actually competing with these teams now because even like, because I'm saying, like, when we were, like, for me, primary school was the time where Arsenal was doing the greatest stuff, right? I was not, uh, I was 10 years, nine, 10 years old when we've done the Invincibles and stuff. 
Mm. So like I don't have the appreciation. I, like I remember it. I vividly remember watching it. But I don't. It's not the same as if we went and done that now. Because now I fully get football. I fully talk about football all the time. It's different. I'm an adult. Or it's different. Yeah. So I had years of us being trash, and I'm talking like when even when like did when you we first were in the fall in love with Arsenal. Oh, since I was born, mate. My dad's a Arsenal fan. No, like so. how, how, what year was that? I need to understand like what you come into. Oh, I was born in '96. Okay. So, um, so what I was, your, your earliest memory for Arsenal is probably like, oh, uh, I don't know, around 2000s. Yeah, in my Maybe yeah, later. my early memories of Arsenal were like, yeah, Burkamp Henry rinsing it up. We were good, bruv. We were good when I first started supporting Arsenal up until about 10. We we're good, but like, even like the latest, like the later years, of, even like when we we're in the Champions League, because this is the reason I'm so excited right now for this team and in the Champions League and stuff, right? Because now it's different. Because even people like we haven't been in the Champions League for however many years, but it's further than that. Because before that, when we were in the Champions League, we were getting these teams and we were scared. Like now it's like we're getting these teams. And yes, I still don't believe it's an easy and straightforward win, but I'm not scared. I'm like, we can beat these guys. It's a different Arsenal now. So I think this season, yeah, it's going to be great in the Champions League. Um, yeah, I think it's, um, it's funny if you go back and look at that. I was just reading an article today about how uh, Chelsea have um because of the cayman files or something have been they found all these links from roman paying all these chelsea players and managers and everyone off the books and there's a good chance of them getting busted and you know it was ironically reported by Bowley and and the clown lake group but <laughs> that might end up getting them punished but um it feels like that that team was stolen from us before we really got to see what it could do like i feel like the invincibles was like scratching the surface of that team and we never really because of the way we decided to go straight for the stadium and you know we're, we're doing all these big moves to try and be keep up with the big boys but that combined with our players going to other teams we just we just never really lived up to the potential and i feel like arsenal's been stuck in limbo since then just waiting for us to kind of you know fully deliver on that and it's almost poetic how the 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 fixtures are lining up and things it feels like you know, I'm calling it revenge season, but it's it's like a Arteta's got a vendetta. He's got to check off against all these people that messed with us when we were when we were shit. And uh, yeah, Bayern's on that list. Kane's on that list. Dyer's on that list just for fun. Um, anyone by association, like even and Barca. I really wanted to get Barca. So if we get have Barcelona final, we've got some we've got some payback. We've got some payback. Uh, for these boys. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Uh, if we could get Barca. In the final, that would be so. Because actually, I wanted PSG, so I wanted PSG in the final. So when we get to the final, we can show Mbappe why he needs to come to Arsenal and not go Real Madrid. In it. That's <laughs> why I have PSG in the final. Yeah. But if you're telling uh, getting revenge on Barca, yeah, would be so beautiful. Absolutely so beautiful. beautiful. Oh, be so It'd be amazing. Listen, big up T for joining. T, big up. T. Uh, big up. Um, Yo, big up, listen, guys. Listen, Barca in the final. If we were to get to the final, yeah, Barca in the final. Would Even be, Atleti, uh, we still got we still got beef with Atleti. Yeah. Europa League. Yeah. Barca in the, beating, beating Barca in the final would be amazing, just because it writes that wrong from all them years ago. I think. Um, just give him Bappe a seat at the stadium, mate. Just let him. We'll, we, is that Wembley, bruv? We'll have some pool. We'll get him a, a little box there or something. He can watch us firsthand bruv, if we were to get well, there. There's but a chance nah, that we can even win the league at Old Trafford and, and you know, beat Spurs along the way. And all the all our haters are lining up like Chelsea, you know, just one by one. And if we can get like a few points ahead, winning the league at Old Trafford would be like the unbelievable icing on this, on this cake because they've been the biggest bastards to us for. For, for forever mm -hmm. so if they had to hold one at home just so that their other rivals didn't break records i, I think that would be hilarious yeah i think I, I agree but i don't think united fans would mind this year if we would win in old trafford compared to other years that we they say uh, that. won they the say league that. you know what i'm saying they say it but i think deep down they do hurt like you see all these united fans saying that they're on loan to arsenal which i would like mm -hmm. to say is like they should be rejected at like at, like flatly they <laughs> 
They can't. You can't just go on loan to a club if we don't want you. We, we hate you guys. We yeah. hated you for generations. Like piss <laughs> off. So I don't think yeah, we should yeah, allow yeah. that. Um, but also, I know that they don't want us to succeed more than any other club. And, and I see it mm-hmm. in not just United fans' faces. I see it in Chelsea's fans' faces. The only thing they've got left to play for is stopping us. The only thing Tottenham have left for play for is pretty much stopping us. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, we're, what we're getting just, lined what are you up. What talking about? Spurs are going to finish above us this season. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just saw Flav saying that. Um, look out for Spurs, you know, if the big teams drop a couple of games, we're coming. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Well. it's it's ironic how you know, Spurs fans roasted Conte and he's at the same position as uh Ange this year, you know what I'm saying? And but, but they are but they play beautiful football now, so it's all good. The the position doesn't matter, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's Tottenham in a nutshell, that's all they care about. But <laughs> boys, listen, on on to the first subject of today, yeah. I'm going to go to Hooks first on this. Yeah. Um, this Ben White stuff, man. Obviously, you see the thumbnail. You see the thumbnail. Let me, let me, let me just, let me just uh, slap it on quick. Let me just slap it on again. Oh, look, 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 look. He's got the, he's got the Uno reverse in his hand, you know. That he's on the beach playing Uno. Now there's the whole thing of he'd rather play playing Uno than playing for his country. Uh, he's a letdown for the <laughs> country. There's that bird that supports Arsenal. Well, she don't support Arsenal. She uses Arsenal for clout and to get kids to buy her OnlyFans, let's be honest. But you've got her going like he's embarrassing. He's 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 mugging off Southgate. Listen, what, what, what's your takes on it, Hooks? Like, what, what do you think about Ben White not going with England and that? Do you think he's... Do you think he needs to get over it and just say, you know what, they want me back, I'm going to go? Or do you think he's right to say, you know what, you disrespected me? We don't know what has happened, but you've disrespected me, so I don't want to come back to England while you're there. Would you think he's right, or do you think he needs to suck it up and just go back? Um, I don't know. It's difficult, right? Because, I don't know, I think about it from a few... So, so basically, if Ben White in that in his heart of heart is like the disrespect that I got shown is so much and I, I don't think that I can play for England again until maybe there's new management or new coaches. Cool. I I can hear that. I can hear that so much. But the one thing that I will say is that if you want to play for your nation, which I assume that regardless of how like into football you are in your personal life or not once you become a it's i guess with all all athletes once you get to a point where you're able to represent your country it's such an honor that you probably always take it more so than not he he could potentially just miss out playing for his nation but i feel like he's at a point now with his game where if he was to play for the national team I think it would be very hard for him to fall out of the first 11. Like, it would be very difficult for someone to, like, explain why they can take Ben White out of the starting 11. Don't get me wrong. Maybe you can rotate for certain games. Cool, whatever. That's fine. But I think in cup competitions, especially international cup competitions, um, a lot of it is momentum. And you usually go with, like, a pretty standard first 11 throughout the whole tournament, barring injuries, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I just, I hear it so much and I I don't like the kind of the the media attention and like, look, if he wants, if he wants to spend his internet, the international break on holiday with his missus, he's, he's more than entitled to. He didn't get called He didn't get taken with the national team. Was he meant to do sit in his house and, just not do anything like it's ridiculous like at the end of the day he's still a human being right but my advice to controversy him, like what actually happened now today like is there something new or is it just yeah well, he was playing uno, uno, he's at playing the beach. uno on the beach and his, his missus put up a story on her instagram of her like ben white ain't in it but it's her with like t- i think she tagged him and it's just some uno okay. cards but the thing is like so on what you said hooks right i'll, I'll let the other boys answer this as well do you think that him not being a football fan does does affect his uh does affect him his decision to play for the country for example right like if you're a diehard football fan, you've watched it. You would have grown up watching the Wayne Rooney's, the 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 Ashley Coles, the Sol Campbell's, the Gerard Lampard, and going, "I want to be for England. I want to play like Beckham. I want to." So it makes the country mean more to you rather than someone who don't really care about it. He 
he lo- he loves playing football, but he's never had that attachment to the the international thing. So now he has been mugged off. Not that he just would choose not to play for them, because he has been mugged off. He's now being like, you know what? Forget this. Also, he's young. Also, this manager ain't going to be there for a long time. And I think he probably knows that this manager probably has one more tournament in him. And he's probably saying, look, I'll just sit out of this one and then I'll go again, brother. I'm only getting better on that. So what do you guys think? I don't think that. I don't think the fact that he's not a super football fan plays. And you know what? I do feel that people kind of blow this out of proportion as well, because he he is very dedicated to football in the sense that he will sit there with he'll sit there with the coaches and he'll watch matches over that he's played in and he will hone in and try and understand mistakes that he made and he will he'll watch football content but it's like i feel like because he dives and you know what as well if he never came out and and said that no one would ever question it because i don't even mm-hmm. think all these other footballers spend all their free time watching football anyway <laughs> mm-hmm. no. decided was it in the all or nothing when he said it or is it i can't remember i think it was when, no, he, when did he originally no i think it was just an interview just an interview yeah it was right? just an interview yeah and, mm-hmm. he, and he yeah he just said that basically he don't want he like listen he just don't really he don't really enjoy watching football he enjoys playing football there's a difference between playing there's a lot of people that i know that enjoy watching football and don't like playing it there's no difference you know, some people he'll watch his game and improve. But yeah, T, T Martin, um, what would you guys think? Would you guys think about the um Ben White mm-hmm. thing? Do you think he's right to not go, or do you think he should be sucking it up and saying, you know what, it's game time, it's international, it's a big stage, it's experience, I should just go and suck it up? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I'll just keep it short and sweet. I think he is within every right to uh refuse to go to the national team. Uh, it's, it's his life, it's his career at the end of the day. If he doesn't want to go, he doesn't want to go. And um, because a, a lot of other great players didn't play for their country, refused to play for their country as well. And this is not the first time this has happened, you know what I'm saying? And um, Ben White, he, I, I, don't, I don't think the watching football is a part of this. I, I, I really think it's an issue with the coach. I, I uh, really think it's an issue with uh, Steve McManaman as well, um, and that 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 that's that's the biggest part of this. I don't I don't think watching football has anything to do with this, and um, I agree in the sense that what you say in the the fact that when Southgate leaves, uh, that he will join back. You know what I'm saying? Because um, let's be real, man. This guy plays Maguire. This guy plays Trippier. This guy plays meaty players every time because he just likes them personally you know what i'm saying it's not like he looks at them and say okay mcguire is the best defender that we have right now let me play him no that's not that's not a fact and he's just like that and ben white let's be real is currently the best right back in england has right now in my opinion yeah um because uh walker is not the same walker anymore trippier is uh, prone to make mistakes it's just like um zinchenko respectfully he's had, a, he's, had, he's had a bad season isn't it yeah he's uh he, he started good but after uh, at the halfway mark he just fell off just like his team uh because uh, newcastle as a whole is not producing and trippier is a big part of that because trippier was a big vocal point in them playing good and now they're playing bad and that's because he plays bad and yeah man uh, uh southgate doesn't do things that make sense every Every England supporter, every England uh, national supporter that I've spoken to does not like Southgate. Not one. And there is a reason for that. And um, if you have uh, a problem with that coach and you know that his uh, uh, um, life in this team is not for a long time anymore, then I understand why he's not joining him right now. Let, let, I'm, I'm going to be real. Do you and, think that there would also, be as and, much drama about it if it wasn't an Arsenal player? Like if he'd come from Brighton or whatever? Like, do you think it would be a, a big issue? Because I feel like the English team is is like an old boys network. And an old boys network, one thing they don't like is like new upstarts that don't watch football when they get home <laughs> coming into like a camp and like disrupting everyone's passion for football or something. I don't know. But when you come up against the old boys and the traditional setup, they want you to play by their rules. And I don't think Ben's got any interest in playing by anyone's rules but his own. 
if someone tells him that he needs to like care more about football, he'll probably tell them to go F themselves. So as an Australian, it would be yeah. the biggest honor for me to play for my country in any sport. Doesn't regard, doesn't matter the coach, but sometimes, you know, I've done some representative sports and you do get put in a situation where you have to put up with an absolute penis of a person to like actually get through <laughs> certain competitions or whatever. Like you have bad coaches or, you know, you, know, you don't get to choose like the, the staff that you play for. You just, you know, you just say, I just want to play for England. Right. But they just want everyone to be like Declan Rice. Who's like happy to be there. Like loves, loves everything about it. Loves football. You know, he's like a perfect poster boy. And Ben's he's, I don't know. He's just been stereotyped as like a Towie lad or something, you know? Yeah, I think I think as well. For, for for me, Ben White's got every right to not play. I don't think they deserve him if they've disrespected him. You shouldn't ever be disrespecting your players. Um, definitely ones that have been called up to the national team and they're doing their nation. This ain't about you as a coach. It's about the country and stuff, right? Um, you're not their manager, right? You're not this yeah. player's manager. Or, uh, you're an international manager. You're a manager for the country, not the players like that. You know, that's why you don't get to sign anyone. It's who, who's a, from the country mm -hmm. you get. You're all meant to be similar on the same, like, level almost. So I think that if he's been disrespected, he has every right to. The thing that's winding me up a lot is uh, the fact that now it's being painted because it's Arsenal. And I do agree that I think one of the big reasons is it being Arsenal is now Gareth Southgate's getting painted with the brush of the victim almost and it's ben white that's the bad guy he's the one not southgate and his staff now for me i have to say it like this right someone says not play for their national team yeah for not to to leave mid competition yeah mid competition to leave and then the manager has actually asked them to come back and they're saying no we don't want to while you're there you've done something wrong like the player is not just doing it to be petty yeah and I, I so so that, that's my thoughts on it. I just don't want them turning it on thing. I think if they, I want to see what people would have been saying if it was Phil Foden that refused to go, if it was, um, or if it was a Harry Kane that was refusing, or a Jude Bellingham that was refusing. I bet the tune would quickly change if it was yeah. Jude Bellingham refusing to play. Declan Rice, as mm -hmm. you say, poster boy, we can see he's the captain tonight. Um, I, I'm, I'm happy and unhappy about him being the captain tonight because, like, for me, he's. England's future captain. Um, Wait, tomorrow, um, right? Yeah, tomorrow. Did I say tonight? Yeah, so mm. I think it's tomorrow. Um, sorry, sorry, tomorrow. Um, yeah, he's England's future captain. The only thing that means is he's going to play most of the game, if not all the game, against yeah. Belgium, which is annoying. But he he's hard, so he can do that. So, listen, Ben, ben White, he's, he's fallen out with them. It is what it is. I don't know why it's being brought up so much. The reason I'm talking about it is because today it seemed to have blown up all of a sudden again. Mm -hmm. I don't care what, get why people care about Ben White so much when they call him trash. The, the, the same people that say Ben White, oh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a disgusting for not going to England. <laughs> These are the same guys that say he ain't top five right backs for England. I've been yeah, hearing yeah. a lot of that. I hear a lot of that. I hear a lot of Trippier, Walker. It's the same Reece people that James, have an issue Trent. with the flag color changing at the back of the shirt. Like it's the same. It's the same people that I don't know. And mm -hmm. the issue is blown out of proportion because Ben White's probably the best right back option available yeah. now that Walker's injured. So it's it's at the forefront. They're kind of like we want him to be here, but ah, oh, he's the enemy yeah. of this. Yeah. And all that, all that Love Island crap. I hate when they say about this Love Island because of how he looks. Like, come on, man. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about. Let's talk about some of the some of the top players, some of the top players of all time, mate. And Adam, look at Paul Pogba. Grealish. Paul Pogba did get it a lot, Grealish, yeah. though, as well. Yeah. Grealish. You got yeah, you got man. Kevin De Bruyne coming back with his new yeah. hair, yeah. and everyone's applauding it. Everyone's going, "Oh, mm -hmm. look at him. He's looking good." Kevin Bowden De Bruyne looking good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And remember, yeah, remember when. Um, uh, Ibrahimovic refused to play for Pep Guardiola because he yeah. didn't like his way of st uh, style of play and then he left Barcelona and uh, people applauded him for that people uh, uh, said to him this is a, a big legend you need to change your system for this legend and not change the player for your system you know what I'm saying and people were like the top po polar opposite about this situation and of course Ben White is not at the same caliber as an as, as Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Don't get me wrong, but even yeah. a top player like Ibrahimovic can uh, uh, get into these kinds of situations with falling off with their coach. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's a Pep Guardiola, 
You know what I'm saying? Well, we saw it with Benzema, and, right? Benzema got kicked out of the French team and then said he didn't want yeah. to play, and then he got ostracized, and then, oh, crap, we need Benzema. I think he eventually made it back in, right? So yeah. it's a way back. Yeah. But you need to change, man. Yeah, and everyone knows yeah. that Southgate's not the guy. He's not yeah. the guy. Listen, no. I'm not going to lie to you. If we played Brazil. Uh, we lost. All right, cool, fair enough. But once again, I'm seeing Harry Maguire start for England, bruv. This guy, this guy ain't the manager for us. You know what happened as well? He put a stinker in and now he's pulled out of the team because I, I tweeted it the other day, bruv. He's bro. pulled out of the team because he knows that is if he stinks it up again, his Euro spot might be in jeopardy. So let me get out of there because I know if I, I keep it like this, I'll start every game in the Euros somehow. Mm -hmm. And don't be surprised if Conor Gallagher gets a big role in this England side together with uh, uh, Chilwell. Even though they were the two worst players, in my opinion, against Brazil, I think I think these two players will get a big role in the Europe in the Euros in England in the England squad. I'm just saying it right now. And you know what the craziest thing is, T? The craziest thing. The only reason, yeah, that Conor Gallagher played is because Henderson was injured. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, that's the scary, well. thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's the scary yeah. thing as an England fan right now that I know, yeah, that if Jordan Henderson is fit, yeah, for the Euros, he will play. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. You know, See, it's, it's funny because it's like, it's like having a Ferrari, but putting like the wrong fuel in it. As an Australian <laughs> watching, um, watching our team, like the Socceroos, our best success has come recently when we just got rid of the old guard, put in a whole bunch of new kids, and just said, let's let's have some fun with the best players like right now. And I feel like that England, that's always been the frustration, is the best players not getting selected with the other best players and then just going to the old guard every time. It's so it's so boring. Even, so, I would so have rather seen so. kids lose to Brazil than than the same old folks, right? So, yeah, hundred percent. Southgate as well. Another thing is, I think he's gonna. I think he's he's not using um, Bellingham correctly either. I don't think Bellingham's a ten. I don't yeah. think that, that he's played ten for for uh, Madrid. I get it. La Liga is different. You you got to be playing him in the eight next to Rice, and then you can have Foden or Madison in the ten. He's putting. He's putting. He wants Jude Bellingham to play like a, an older guard or something to to control the whole game i don't think that is the sort of player mm -hmm. that jude bellingham is and i was watching it, and I, it felt a bit yeah. it felt a bit forced like what we got to realize is that real madrid he's got absolute ballers everywhere everywhere yeah. he looks there's absolute ballers everywhere. there there's no me yeah. player listen i'm sorry yeah but when you're playing and, and also injuries Madrid, injuries bro, forced him to play more forward as well real madrid has a, has a lot of injuries man exactly and, like this i'm saying they, like, um I swear they utilize him not he I know he plays in the 10 area, but I swear they utilize him more as like a shadow striker. Yeah, they, they mm -hmm. so he's Real Madrid. Like, he's like they, the he's thing not, is you can't even compare it play. because as I say, with Real Madrid, he's looking left and right and set like striker. Like obviously the right is cool for England, but like like that game there, he had Golden and Watkins. Now they're good players, but they're not Vinicius Jr. and stuff that he's got. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> these sort of man he's got he ain't got Valverde there you know what I mean yeah so I think I think but he's using him wrong you know what it is Giuseppe what you say makes a lot of sense okay and that's why Southgate won't do it <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah. they, that's just how it works bro that's just how it works <laughs> it's facts bro facts maybe we should start telling him like some wrong shit so he does the right shit you know yeah we we need we need to praise Chilwell. We need to praise Conor Gallagher more, so he doesn't play them. You know what I'm saying? That's what needs yeah, to happen. I, just, I, 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 I hope we get battered like eight nil by Belgium tomorrow, and it triggers the FA to go. All right, you know what? We can't go into the Euros with this guy as manager because I, I, I like it's not even I just an England that. thing. Like there you go. Nothing, nothing makes me yeah. Where, especially when it comes to the to the nation, yeah. Nothing makes me more frustrated to know that we finally, yeah, finally have a team, yeah, that is capable of competing with the bigger nations all over mm -hmm. the pitch. But we're going to waste it and waste all this talent for this idiot manager. Like, I just don't understand. Like, it doesn't make any sense at all. And it's so frustrating because it, it seems like, Gareth Southgate, he must know 
he must have some information about the the, the higher ups on the inside or something that he's using as like, yeah, you can't get rid of me because if you get rid of me, then I'm gonna leak this information about what you did at this party with this person. And yeah, I saw you in it's this. Just room a yes man, him. though. Like guys Crazy, up, yeah. up above love a yes man that can just be like their extension, right? They don't want to have any drama mm -hmm. from the team, but. When you have a national team you want to play well it's hard because they're all playing for separate clubs but you have to like that's the real skill of being the managers how can we play a certain type of football that all these players who barely play together will play really well out of nowhere after three days training and they always yeah. just seem to default back to like a pretty boring setup but it's not it's not just england like france like the the shops are saying that saliba <laughs> he's not playing because he doesn't play the way he likes him to play it's like well you're not getting the best out of saliba <laughs> if you don't like him to dribble with the ball but Deep down, as an Arsenal fan, I'm fine with all this. I don't want Ben White to be yeah. there. I don't want Saliba playing. Right. I don't if want Saka playing. If if I say what I want to say about the shops and the Southgate, <laughs> I I would never be online and, and as a platform ever, because those two guys, bro, they just piss me off with their with how they think about a team and football in general. You know what I'm saying? Because not only does he do this with Saliba, he, he does this with, for example, Sasha Bowie which is, in my opinion, a right back we should have got at Arsenal. I think he is quality right. defensively and offensively, together with Frimpong, but Sa uh, Sasha Bui has defensively a uh, defense as well. And when he plays for Galatasaray, and you know I'm Turkish, so my hometown club is Galatasaray, and he just didn't pick him for the dumbest reasons. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, what is this mindset? <laughs> is, is your ego more important or winning an actual trophy for your country? You know what I'm saying? Because and Southgate is the same. Playing Henderson is criminal, bro. What I criminal. saw, and and I am not English, so I, I do not have any emotional attachment to this whatsoever. Yeah, I just like to see good football. But what I saw against Brazil, bro, th that Brazil team was the worst Brazil team I've ever seen in my life, with a 17-year-old playing in the second half. Let's be real, bro. 17-year-old who scored the winner, by the way, also. And you play that criminal football and think you can do something at the Euros with that? Nah. And, and, and I think it's a shame because it, I think, in my opinion, England has the second best team in, Euro, uh, in, in the Euros, I think. Maybe third if you want to count Germany as well. But after France, for me, it's England, bro. Because you have Foden, you have Saka, you have Harry Kane. These are big names, bro. And what you do is you play Henderson, you play Maguire, you play Pickford as well. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's crazy, man. Yeah, bro, listen, Martin hit the nail on the head. He's a yes man. It's as simple as this. He's a yes man that has fortunately, through circumstances and through uh, draws and stuff has got far in competitions so it's given them leniency to keep on to him because he'll be they'll be like yeah he got to a final he got to a semi-final yeah but you don't want they don't want to talk about the context of how he got there the fact that he played no one in either of them tournaments of any relevance apart from uh italy that they lost to in the final uh, who did they go out? Who was it that they went out to? Was it Croatia? They went out Croatia. to Croatia. Yeah. They went out. To, we went out to. Mm -hmm. And the only other team you could argue is Germany. In a year and the year period where Germany were, it's by name, right? It's like beating Chelsea at the moment. Yeah, you can't they beat Chelsea um, at the moment and talk yeah. like you've beaten one of the best teams in the country. You can't. Do they didn't that. qualify, did they? For the 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 they didn't qualify. I swear, that, was it that they didn't qualify for the? The competition before and the competition after, right? Something like right. that. This is yeah. like, but they just weren't Germany. They just weren't. They weren't that good. Like, fair enough. England beat Germany. Yeah, we beat Germany. Fair enough. But that's not a. Uh, uh, that ain't the same as beating a Spain, beating an Italy, beating a like. Because even if Italy it is the thing, like I'm Italian, I'm Sicilian, Italian, and I'm, I was born here in England, right? So I've I, I love both teams. Um, I've seen my country lift everything. Yeah, my lifetime, I've oh, seen oh, Italy. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, bro, oh, England no, and right. Italy. That's why I want England to win. That's why I want England to win. Because Italy, I've watched them lift everything. I've watched them lift the World Cup. I've watched them lift the Euros, right? <laughs> the the times that we've done it. Fun it's fact. <laughs> fun fact. Fun fact. When I was growing up, and I still, still to this day, yeah, he gets there, yeah. My actual favourite player, yeah. Obviously, excluding like the Arsenal man, 
yeah. was Francesco Totti. Yeah, what a baller. baller. And here's the Absolute thing, yeah. Legend. That's a legend. And the times that Italy, I'm telling you now, the times that Italy won, they were never the favourites. They were never the favourites. They were they were a team where they were like almost like a dark horse. But why did they do it? Because they were coached correctly. They had a good mm -hmm. manager each time. They fought, fought for the team. They fought for each other. They have like the, the thing when I watch England sometimes is first thing that I don't always see in the team is like they're not patriotic for the country, right? They're not. They're more patriotic to the clubs, right? Big yeah. big up Ellis in the chat as well. Yeah. Um, cheers for coming through, brother. Um, England, yeah, and I see it because it's like, for example, right? I watch a lot of WWE, right? Still, yeah, bro. Are you crazy, bro? Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> hey, bro. Are you crazy, <laughs> bro? It's a generational thing, yeah? bro. Listen, oh, <laughs> but like when I watch it, bro, and you see the way these men are in America, bro, the way they're patriotic out there. USA, USA, you but England don't do that, bruv. England are just trying to slag off their players all the time. The media, the fans, they're trying to because they love their club so much. If someone plays for a rival club, they're just gonna slag them off all the time. Yeah, look at what Sterling got, look at all the racial abuse our players get, bruv. Yeah, this is the problem. So it don't breed that thing of these players really wanting to bring something for England, they can want to for themselves. Yeah, they could, there's a difference. Yeah, you're gonna want to win the trophy if you're in it. You're gonna want to be a guy that brings the, the the World Cup back to England because not it ain't been done for ages. Yeah, but there's a difference between that and like it, when I watch Italy play and they want to do it for the country. They want to do it for Italy. Italy is pride for them. I don't see the same with England, and this is the problem. And then you see stuff like the Gareth. Sutton. You think you'd ever see that happen with Italy? You can never see what's happened with Southgate yeah. and, and, and mm -hmm. Ben White really happen in Italy. Nah, bruv. And I'm telling you now, you know, if that does happen, it's the player. It's the player and not the manager. Because trust me, uh, Italy ain't like that. Yeah, Italy, you know how much what, how much Italy love their national team? Napoli yeah. manager. Napoli didn't want to let him go. Italy themselves went to Napoli. Oh, well, no, mate. We're giving you the money, and he's coming to England. Hi, You've got no choice. You've got no choice. That you know what? Napoli yeah. had no I'm choice gonna... but to let their manager, because he wanted to go as well. If the manager didn't want to go, that's a different story. You can't force a person into that. The manager wanted to go. Italy themselves gazumped them and said, oh, no, he's the Italy manager now. You can't do anything about it. I have a theory on this, you know. It's a bit corrupt, but I respect it. It's a bit think... peak. It is, but at the same time, <laughs> fuck it, man. <laughs> yeah, I think um, the reason... So, I, I have a theory on this, yeah. So, realistically, if you if you think about it, if you look at England, yeah, as a nation, so as a country, if you look at England, yeah, it's a very, it's a very multicultural country, right? So, you've got a lot of people that will play for the national team that, yeah, they're English, but they're not English, if that makes sense. Like... Marcus Rashford, Bukayo Saka, um, Sterling, um, even to a degree, people like um, Grealish, who I, I believe is is Irish, and you so got Declan, um, Rice. Declan Rice, who's Irish. So basically, inside of the inside of England, if you look at football, a lot of the players that would play for England aren't actually fully English. But if you look at like Italy, Italians, <laughs> yeah. Turkey, Turkey, Turkish people, Japan. Japanese, like if, if you look at all these other countries, yeah, that do really Spain, all Spanish, like Brazil, like Brazil and Argentina, yeah, yo, them man, that there's nothing greater than playing for their nation. But I feel like it's because all of their nation is just their nation, if that makes sense. So, and obviously the 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 like socio political kind of element inside of like England that's kind of played to by the media like for example when Sterling gets a tattoo on his leg of a gun all of a sudden he's a criminal now <laughs> like I think I think that those things play a part in how a lot of people view national foot like even what's happening with Ben White like I just feel like the the media and the I guess the whole like kind of social circumference of England just doesn't help people's desire to want to represent and like give their blood, sweat, and tears for for the nation. Because if you look at club level, mm -hmm. 
just look at the treatment. If you just look at the Arsenal players, like if you if you actually speak to any of the Arsenal players about how they feel about being at Arsenal, yo, you'd you'd think that they, every day they they when they walk into that building, they're walking into heaven. <laughs> that, that's what you would you would think. <laughs> like that's the level of treatment that some of these players get at some of these clubs. So, for example, I think a lot of the reason why Ben White left off is because the the approach to coaching and, and like, the whole tactical side of the game is nowhere near <laughs> from what he's experiencing inside of Arsenal with Arteta and the coaches to then go in to England with Southgate, a man like Steve Holland. Yo, it's like, it's, it's like yo, one's... <laughs> One's all the way in space, and the other, the other one somewhere, somewhere at the bottom of the earth. Like the, the gap between them two is crazy. So yeah, I guess obviously big up Southgate for the one thing that I'll, I'll big up Southgate for that he actually fixed was the England dressing room is no longer clicky. So back in the day when we actually had one of the greatest midfields in English history, but it just yeah. never worked was because of how clicky it was. Like, oh, yeah, oh, man, I can't be cool with him because he's Manchester United and I'm Liverpool and I'm Liverpool and he's Chelsea and it just, yeah. it's just too much. Yeah, but, it was pretty slow as well. It was pretty slow. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think you know what, the, the, you, the thing about, I don't think Southgate's done anything good. I don't think anyone's, like, I don't think, I think any new manager would have probably been sorting that clicky thing out anyway. Um I also think that England before Southgate, their managerial selection was trash. Capello was, uh, for me, uh, wrong. Um, I I personally believe that all the staff and the manager should have to be from the country as well. Um, like the players, they should have to be like citizen of the country. Um, obviously, yeah, listen, I, I can understand why some of these players don't give their blood, sweat and tears because at the same time, like, uh, Saka missed a penalty in the final of the Euros and he got racially abused and so did Rashford and so did Sancho. I had done said that if, if I was any of the African players um, in the England team, I would have boycotted the World Cup. Uh, I would have all, all of them and then we would have seen how England done without none of them players and then it would have showed everyone to shut the fuck up. And, and I don't feel be like England like that suffered a little bit because of the success of the Premier League, that it was such a major thing that it almost felt like going to play for England was a bit of a, you know, I've got to get through this so I can get back to my club and, you know, whatever's yeah. going on there. And it, it does feel like that a lot. And, and appointing, yeah, you're right, appointing mad coaches like Allardyce would have been, I think, horrendous over the long term. But fortunately, he had that controversy. But that brought you to Southgate on an interim basis. And then he won a couple of games and it was like a bugger. You can stay. So... I think it's interesting about coming from the same country. Um, we had Gus Hiddink come to Australia, and he revolutionised Australian football for <laughs> no, 20 years after Hush Hiddink. Hush. Yeah. Hush, Hush Hiddink, yeah. Um, Hush Hiddink, yeah. He, 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 <laughs> he selected up, youth out of nowhere, players that were crap. Everyone thought it was crap. He just pulled them into the national team and turned them into a perfect system for what he wanted to do. So... I don't. I don't think maybe Big Ange will go back to Australia after his <laughs> after his Spurs stint, but <laughs> we have to reach outside those borders. I think England have to as well. You need someone who's going to put their like absolute life and soul into that team. I, I think this is, why, this is why I think England need Pep. But based off of yeah. what you said about about who's hitting here, this is why I think that England needs some Pep or someone like Pep because Pep will come in <laughs> and he will impose his philosophy not only on the first 11, but the squad, and then the under-23s, and then the under-21s, and then the under-18s, and then it will go all the way down to, like, the, the under... I think it's under... Is it under-16s? And then... 12s, 11s, I think it's, yeah. yeah, then and then he will make sure that anyone who's coming through that England setup already understands how to play his philosophy. So that, ah. that's the type of manager... That England needs, and right now, mm. for me, it's only Pep, or maybe I don't know, maybe may, maybe Arteta. But Hansi I don't want Arteta. Flick, maybe. No, or... listen. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Right. First, 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 listen. Pep's never going to England because at the same time, he's looking at it and go, "Why the hell am I going to go to England? I'll just go and manage Spain and do it no, there." No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. No, but he's he's Catalonian. 
Mm. So, so he so, may, he I don't may... think he'll care. I don't think he'll care that much. I think he won't pick England, bro. I'll tell you now. Listen, England don't. I don't. Listen, it'd be great. Of course, you're talking the best managers on earth, like you know. For me, a great manager for England, honestly, would be Eddie Howe. I think. I honestly think so. I think that, uh, like Eddie Howe, you see what he done with. Um, I know he ain't having the greatest season this year, um, with Newcastle, but I think the thing that he struggles with the most is kind of like buying players and stuff and and stuff that side of things as a manager so for england where he has the team there listen if he puts if he makes england defend the way that newcastle was defending last year right they've had injuries this year and stuff but he'll have better defenders for england if he does that england will win the competition 100 percent. like i think someone like that is good enough for england but you need someone at least like that gareth southgate don't Southgate's not a Premier League manager, in my opinion. He's championship at mm. best. He's not a Premier League. He'd get renegated in the Premier League. Honestly, he'll get renegated in the Premier League. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, brother, please go Man United. You're renegated. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know. I'd like to see uh, that guy from Luton. What's the Luton manager's name? Uh, Rob Edwards. Yeah, Rob oh, Edwards. Rob Edwards. The, 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 the Someone who can like. Yeah, yeah, you can get you can get the ladies in, you can get the kids in, you know, like he's gonna play all the young guys, it's gonna be fun. Cause a lot of the sport in the in the global landscape is going to more exciting versions of itself, like cricket, you know, T twenty and all that, they changed a very traditional game into something that's like, how can we make it into a highlights package? So if they can do anything to make England sexier, then I think that that would go a long way. I think another person that has to be looked at, I know obviously Chelsea ruined him, but Graham Potter as well. I know people want to say what they want to yeah. say about him, but his style of play plays mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. And I think for England, when he ain't got all the bull crap of having yeah. to be told who to sign and everything, I think he'll be yeah. great as well. But listen, enough right. of England, because 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 we love Arsenal here and we forget it. And I, obviously England, England is what it is and that. We've got an Australian guy here. We've got a Turkish guy that lives in <laughs> lives in Holland. We've got, we've got an Italian guy that lives in England, loves England, and we've got hooks that's English, you know. So uh, England's not our love. Like, let's be honest. I think I can tell everyone in this in this chat. If I ask you this this season, we win the Champions League or Prem, or England win the next two fucking major trophies like the Euros and the World Cup, we're all picking Arsenal, right? Hundred percent. I would pick Turkey, man. I'm gonna be real. <laughs> would you? I, I will admit that, that, when I was a kid, I, I would, I would I, pick Turkey. Yeah, I hear that though yeah. because that's a little bit different. I feel like you, you Turkey are never gonna do it. Like yeah, <laughs> w w yeah that that and uh, we're also a little bit like you, uh, Italians. You know what I'm saying? We're yeah. really patriotic. And Turkey, at the end of the day, even if you play for Fenerbahce or Galatasaray, everyone would pick Turkey. You know what I'm saying? Because that yeah. would be the dream, bro. To, to to rub the World Cup in people's face as a side that was never expected to win it, bro. That would be yeah, that would be like Greece when they won the Euros, innit? Yeah, exactly like that. Exactly yeah. like that. Yeah. But listen, on to Arsenal news. There's there was this news that come out. Um I, yeah, yeah, I see that still. So I'll get you first on this. Obviously, the news come out this morning. We had Sard in the chat going trying to scare us all first thing in the morning, trying to trying to trying to make us all, all cry, telling us Martin Eddy needs a, a foot operation and stuff, so he, uh, he won't be playing against City. Um, obviously, that's not true now. It's come out and it's been confirmed. He hasn't had no foot operation. He's fine. Do you guys, I'm Hooks, would you think he plays against City? Would you start him against City if he's available? Or would you say, like, maybe start him on the bench? Da, da, da. Um... Um, yeah, it's a I tough one, eh? I don't know, <laughs> man, because you know what? Because I don't like even if he is fully fit, how many games has he missed? He's missed quite a few, right? And I, I don't know, I just two, though, yeah, two, like two, two or something, three. yeah. Two but or the thing is, because it's because two, but because he got injured and then there was two, I think. Like, because the thing is, because of this international break and stuff, and we had that other FA Cup break, it feels like ages since we've we've seen him. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like because it's Man City and it's at the Etihad, I just feel we have to play the players that are on form. Like, that's just what we 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 can't. It can't be the, oh, I think that this is my overall best lineup going into the Man City game. I don't think we can do that. I think we have to go with 
these are the players that are excelling in these areas through the data that we've seen and in training sessions and all of that. They're raring to go. Just play them. Like, because I don't want it to be the case of, yeah, Martinelli plays, but he has a stinker because he can't he can't adjust to the tempo of the game because he's been out for a bit and he's had maybe one or two training sessions and he just just not in the flow. I, I don't know, like, not to say... I, I would have him in the squad and if, if it's, like, looking like, oh, it's 1-1 one, one at, like, 70 minutes, then I'd be, I'd be looking at, like, from our tech, I'd be looking at Martinelli on the bench, like, okay, cool, start warming up in it, start warming up. And then you come on and then you create some chaos. But I just don't know personally if I would start him, um, if I'm being honest. Do you not take mm -hmm. into consideration, by the way, I'll, I'll put my quick opinion in, then T and Martin can go as well. Uh, I would start him on the bench. Uh, I think he'll be great to come off the bench, but I just wouldn't bring him on late. Um, but do you not take into consideration that he scored the winner against them earlier this season and maybe you want to start him and say you want you won no. the game last yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah well that was off the bench though yeah oh yeah, yeah funny, it was. It? Yeah, yeah that was off the bench and somebody else came off the bench to assist him do you remember yes you remember? Daver. Tommy and Tommy yeah. as well Tommy yeah, as well pretty much all the subs like got together and went let's have a party but I think the issue mm -hmm. is part, more in Kai part as well. than Jesus I think oh, Jesus is it, probably well. So does Jesus. I think in this scenario where we're coming up against City at the Etihad, I think Arteta is probably going to value ball possession over. Look, okay, I know Walker's injured, and there's like a weakness there. We can get speed at them, but I think maybe that'll be more effective in the second half. I think we probably want to survive the first half more than like try and sucker punch them in the face. So, so would you? Maybe I would. Play I would Jesus go for Jesus left. left. Yeah. And then Kai in the middle. Yeah. Um, Trossard maybe has a shot for that spot, but I think he's a bit wasteful with the ball when he's under pressure. And going back to goal, it's quite easy to sort of shove him off the ball, and, and he rarely gets that foul called. So, yeah, I would put Jesus up there. He's also extra motivated to try and stop City. Mm -hmm. uh, more it's than it's a tough others, one so. because it's a tough one because City will not go for a low block, and we normally. Would play, would rather play Havertz when we face a low block because of his height and because of his um, presence in the box and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And for City, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe Trossard at striker could be an option, in my opinion. But I personally, uh, because I know that Arteta will go for the controlled style like he did at the Emirates, and maybe look for a late goal. Um, it it won't be a high scoring game, I think. But I personally would start Martinelli just so we can get the early goal. Because I think Martinelli's speed is something that we missed when Trossard plays at the left. And you know how much I rate Trossard. Um, I think Martinelli's speed is... <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I think Martinelli's speed is something that we could use immensely especially against someone like Kyle Walker who is still really fast even though he is not the same player anymore he's still really fast and he's still well, sharp. he's injured he, right he, so he's likely not oh he's play. injured yeah oh, okay but... it's, 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 it's a 50 50 right because he went down and he come mm. off 20 minutes into the England game now he might be injured for the game or yeah. it's that he felt something and this guy cares more about his club and he said you know what i felt a little something i'm coming off and going home i'm not risking mm -hmm. it we've got a, we've got a league to go for you know my perception on that was though because when he so when he he originally got injured yeah and then they looked into it and then he decided to carry on playing so i think he was already injured before he came back on and then it just got to a point where because he tried to play through it he must have strained it even further and then went, okay, you know what? Do you know how sometimes you self-diagnose yourself and you think, yeah, it's not as bad as well. As well, yeah. well yeah, it's not really that bad. It's fine. Plus I, he I was captain, right? right? Like, so I yeah. don't think you wanted to so you just want to disappear. Yeah. Yeah. I think, listen, I think I, that, I, that Martinelli's speed thing, I'll just I'll go back to TK. I think that that's more valuable in the second half because everyone's tired. And if you can bring on Martinelli, who's fresh as beans after two weeks of mm -hmm. just, sitting there, he will just tear them to pieces. And Trossard's very good coming on late, too. I, I like both of them against tired players. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's a factor. Mm -hmm. yeah, Trossard, for, for me, for the me. only thing for me, just, just really short, 
yeah. only thing for me is I don't know if we can control them at the at the height. That's that's my only problem. That's that's the only thing uh, that's that worries me a little bit, and uh, that's why I would love to go for an early goal, and that's why yeah, I would well. prefer Martinelli's speed mm -hmm. at the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for yeah. that like that's that's the problem, like right? Because you've got you've got um, Trossard now. For me, there's this thing like that. This thing for me with Trossard, I love Trossard, but like sometimes, bro, he like has real stinkers when he starts the game, bro. But I never see him have a stinker off the bench. You know them ones. Uh, Hooks, Hooks has yeah. to go. So uh, love for coming through, Hooks. Yeah, um, man. Anytime, man. Big up Hooks. Come on, chats, man. Yeah, man. All right, sweet. Take care, guys, and I'll catch up later. Have a good evening. See, bro. Right. Ciao, ciao. Peace. Missed him. So yeah, listen, like Trossard has this thing when he starts that like, he stinks it up sometimes. Like, and I think it's actually more more often than not, especially when he's playing on the left. If he's got to start the game, he's got to start it in the 10 or the false nine or something like that. Otherwise, don't start him, honestly. If you've got to start him on the wing, I'd I would i would rather start someone else. I'd rather start Jesus on the left personally. The only problem then. Yeah, I don't think he's just that good going with his back to goal for some reason. Like I don't know why it's related to that, but Jesus is much yeah, better with his back to goal than Trossard. Yeah, so so for me, I'd probably listen. I, I don't mind listen because we don't know the extent of Martinelli, right? We from what I remember hearing originally, it was just a bruised foot with a cut on it. Cut. So he, he cut his foot. He cut his foot. So the reason he didn't even play, the reason he didn't play against Porto in the second leg, from what I've read, is that. He could play like physically, he was fine, but then foot wounds they open up quite easily, like them, yeah, yeah, stitches foot. or something. So, yeah, yeah, so they didn't want to risk it. They were like, Listen, we've got more important stuff, let him have this off, rest the international break, he'll be a hundred percent fit for the city game. Now, if he is a hundred percent fit, if he is fine and he's been fine and he's been training, and he's been cool. I think he, he does have to start. I think you've got to start him because I think he will also have that little thing of not playing and stuff. So so I would – listen, if he ain't 100%, I think I'd he's okay. I remember watching the game when he came off and it looked like he mouthed to Arteta, like, it's okay, even though he's been carried off by two guys. I can remember seeing that in the game and not being worried from that point on. But, yeah, yeah. we'll have to find out. Yeah, it's 100%. It's a weird one because I've never but, seen anyone get a cut from, like – inside their boot I, it would have to be because there was no blood everywhere that you would normally expect from a cut right so yeah i don't know somehow so, he got cut maybe his toe or something yeah but it was it was a small cut as far as i can remember it was not a uh, it didn't hit any ligaments or something it was a small yeah. cut and that's why yeah. i did i don't think it was that significant uh in the eye you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. i think it was one of them studs across the top of the boot they're so thin now that it's probably giving him a yeah. cut it's opened up and it's more of just a precaution thing with him. Like, mm -hmm. it's like, what's the point? Like, we know from other seasons of risking these players, then it gets worse. You know, he might be playing, and it's it's more of an uncomfortable thing, and it might cause him to do something that ends up making him get more injured or whatever. So, listen, yeah, I think I think it's going to be a great game, the City game, and we're probably, we're definitely going to be talking more about it. But mm -hmm. just on our Martinelli, we I love him. I think like obviously, if Carl Walker doesn't play, he'll he. he it will be nice for him. Um, the only thing is, if they have like uh, so other people right back, there's other players that are pretty decent. So it's going to be a tough game regardless. But um, yeah, listen, for me, if he's 100% fit, he starts. If he's not 100% fit, and it is the thing where he's still not fully up to scratch, I'd start him on the bench. But I'd start Jesus once. I'd, I'd also agree, start Jesus on the left uh, for this game. Um, mm -hmm. if yeah, he's playing habits. I'm saying habits up top. Yeah, I think you have to. Yeah. He's, he's hit, last five games, he's got four goals and two assists in his last five or something. He scored for Germany. Well, he, you've got mm. to play him. He's on scoring yeah. form, yeah. and and I'm not going to lie to you. Out of all our players, no matter what anyone wants to say, from what I'm seeing this season, from all our players, he's the only one that's there in the right place at the right time. You know, you know, like when when it gets slotted across the box, he's the one that's there to tap it in, and I feel like that might be the sort of mm -hmm. opportunity to get against Man City 
you see the same goal for 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 Germany. It was a tap in, but it was a great tap in because bro, man just stood, man got into the right position to the point where man got it and he was just there and he could just put it in the back of the net. And that's what mm -hmm. we kind of need against City. Like, I don't think you're going to get an abundance of chances. So uh, we need a striker badly, and it does show it with with the Havertz stuff. It does show me that we need a striker because mm -hmm. he's an option, but he's not a yeah. Havertz it was. Avers was supposed to be an extra option in the box when he played eight, and now he plays straight up striker. So we yeah. we do miss another presence in the box. I do agree with that. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, it just shows that we can upgrade if we get someone good, like like a good finisher is is what I'm what I'm keen on, a tall good finisher. So if we can find one of those, we can mm -hmm. potentially replace him. Yeah. But I think Havertz will always do that job in the box. He he makes the easy things look hard, and the hard things look easy. It's like. It's like everything's training for him. Yeah. Yeah. And he, for some reason, is great at penalties. <laughs> he is great. Yeah, that's so unexpected. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, it's like we've got quite a good load of penalty takers, like, to be honest. So that's a good thing for mm. us going forward. Yeah. Jorginho uh, got played uh, for Italy, right? He got an assist. And he's played two games, Ecuador and Venezuela, already. Yeah. I think. Jorginho has a ball. Now. Um, that's interesting though, because mm -hmm. he was supposedly carrying an injury that we were nursing. So I wasn't expecting him to be starting for for Italy so much, but I guess that means that he can manage it, and it's it's not it's not a bad thing. So it's funny we were doing this team of the season stuff the other day, and Jorginho will never get a mention, but quietly he's almost he's almost in my Arsenal team of the season just from his performances and the, the way he's able yeah, to handle for us, the big game. Yeah. For us specifically, yeah. Yeah, I think him playing the six with Rice at the eighth is our best midfield right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he made the change. The, the, way, the, way, the way he plays with the ball, his calmness, his spraying balls uh, forward, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 the high through balls that he gives uh, sometimes uh, ends up as a goal. And yeah, I, I agree. If we, if we purely look at our, our own team, uh mm -hmm. Jorginho is for sure in the team of the season for us specifically and also what you said about <laughs> team of the seasons uh remember I super mm -hmm. chatted uh, Jorginho in the super uh, in the in the team oh, of yeah, the season? yeah that was you right <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was me that was me that was me yeah. no trolling no um, trolling no trolling we're real here we're real <laughs> those yeah. team of the seasons were absolute shambles I have to I have to admit do you know what the problem is with the and team it's of content, the season? It's content. It's, 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 the problem with team of the season, right, is at this point, it is all... Um, what's the Agenda. word? For, for right now, for me, team of the season is who you like, who you prefer. You've got a few options, and then it's who you prefer. Now, once the season ends, it changes. Because if Arsenal win the Premier League, Saka has to be in the team. Declan Rice has mm. to be in the team. Saliba and Gabriel have to be in the team. Van Dijk is out of the team, in my opinion. If we win the league, Van Dijk is out of the team because you can't have us win the league, have the best defensive record, and not mm. keep our centre-back pairing in there when they've been pretty decent all season. That's mm. just me. So I think once... The, and it's the same with with with, with uh, the other teams, right? Where it, whoever wins, there, there, there has to be majority of their players in the team. I'm sorry. It's just how I believe it should be. There's people that go, oh, but it's individuals... It's, it's hard because, yes, you could compare Saka and, and Palmer this season, but Palmer's finishing 11th with his team and Saka's won the league. So there is differences. Mm. The pressure that Saka had to play under is not the pressure that Palmer had to play under. So th these are all things that you have to take into consideration. And once again, it all becomes subjective. It all becomes what you think. It's the same with the all-time 11. You can't get an all-time 11 and tell me that's the definite all-time 11. Mm -hmm. only a no, but we, we often have players. to like deal with rivals deciding for us. So look, I think it was Elawa and A-listers combined. There was like 10 people on there. I think there was two Arsenal fans, Saad and Egal, but everyone else was celebrating that then they didn't select Saka. It was like it was a huge moment for them that they could deny us Saka being in the team of the season. And narratives like Saka having a bad season is just something that can like maintain 
against all evidence because I think he's on, he's nearly got 30 GA now in, in 30 That's why we need to win the league, man. It's crazy. That's why crazy. we need to win the league. Because the second we yeah. win the league, this is the thing. The narrative changes the second we win the yes. league. I've said it. We win the league this season. We It's not only this season that people are going to stop chatting shit about. It's next season, the season after. Because the second they chat mm -hmm. shit about Saka, but he won the league mm -hmm. for us. That's all. That's nice. But he won the league for us. But yeah, we, it started. It started trophy. off with it started off with last season being an anomaly, and we proved this season that it's not an anomaly, and we're actually title challengers. The only thing, the one thing left, we 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 had so many steps to get to this point. The final step is to get silverware, and that's the most important thing. That's the that's when the world class conversations start to happen. That's when the <laughs> I don't I don't want those convos. going to stop. You know what I'm saying? Listen, the, the, listen. At the end of the day, them convos. The, the, listen, at the end of the day, this is how close it is for Arsenal right now. Yeah, in my opinion, if we win the league this season, we instantly have four world class players. Instantly, Saka, Rice, Saliba, and um, Odegaard, Odegaard are world class. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're well-class. If we win the league, they become well-class now because they've shown Jesus, it and they've won something. Virginia. Yeah, I, I feel like that's a bit different. Like, see, see they, the thing is with Jesus and Georgina and that, I just don't fit like they're a bit older and that. Like, Jesus has won it multiple times. G G Georgina has won it multiple times. But, like, I feel like cause it's the same reason I don't believe so much that maybe if, even if we win the league, it, it's Ben White well-class. Probably not. Like he's not. Mm -hmm. But you know, um, is Gabriel? I don't think so. Uh, the reason I say Saliba over Gabriel is because Saliba does stuff that no, like that that not many defenders can do. And that, like, I'm not saying he's having a better season. That's not the thing. Mm. But like, it's I interesting think he you does say that because like... I think Ben White could could potentially put himself in that conversation depending on the size of the moment. But you know, if he delivered a header on a cross or something, or put in a cross for the Champions League final. You can start making cases like that because it's the big moments, the big deciding yeah. moments that sort of yeah. turn them into mm -hmm. world class. For me, yeah. there's, there's 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 three factors of world class, right? In in the world class category, there's the 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 being successful, yeah, and be, but not only being successful, being pivotal in the success. There's like Origi's not world class because he won Champions League with Liverpool, right? <laughs> yeah. Um. That was a poor choice, by the way, because he actually did produce goals to win. <laughs> he, um, he did produce. Yeah, but, yeah, but like, well. then you've got then you've got a, play, a player's quality. Yeah, right. That you that is the original world class. This is what a lot of people call players world class. And that's why a lot of people won't give Saka world class. And his people, I'm telling you now, even if we win the league and that, they'll still not say Saka's world class because for them, world class is different. For them, world class is Ronaldinho. Uh, Thierry Henry, guys that are amazing to watch, beautiful to watch. They're skill, they're skillful. They're flashy. They're like they've mm -hmm. got stuff that not many other players have. Whereas Saka's more got what a lot of other players has, but he's consistent. It's a lot of re reason why there's a lot of people that don't actually rate Salah as well class. There's a lot of people that don't because he's almost painted with that same brush of Saka. And it's more of a brush of, yeah, he has his games where he does nice stuff and that, but it's more he's consistent all the time rather than being an like like being like Ronaldinho or Neymar or something, you know. And that's the problem with world class now. It's like, what is world class? There ain't no way of, there mm -hmm. ain't no definitive thing of what world class is. Yeah, right. It's a it's about it's just an annoying thing. getting over the finish one time, and then after that, how many times are you are you gonna do it? Because once that's again, the question right? for me. Saka scores 20 goals this season. Just an example. Saka scores 20 goals this season. And mm -hmm. because we fucked up in the defence, we don't win the league. People will say he's not world class. Saka scores 20 goals. The defence don't fuck up in them games. We win the league. Now he's world class. You could yeah. ask, you could answer, you could ask these people and say, so what's the difference in Saka being world class or not world class? Because he's done the exact same thing. His, his team as a whole just not one his team as a whole has just fouled it's not one person that's fouled it ain't Saka missed a penalty what about if Saka scores a hat trick last what about if we need to win the last game of the season right to to win the league Saka scores a hat trick but we concede four goals now people go he's not oh, he ain't won anything so he's not well class but if we'd won that game he would have been well class 
that's where the confusion comes because it's like, is it are you are you, is it on the player's ability only, or are you actually using team? Because like this is why in arguments of who's the best player, I don't like introducing international into it. When people mm-hmm. are trying to compare players, mm. don't, I don't ever like bringing international into it. Messi and Ronaldo is the only argument where I'll bring international into it a little bit because they're, they're just the top of the top level and there's not much bet- between them otherwise, even though Messi's by far the better player, um, if, in my opinion. <laughs> um, he it, Like, for me, it's, it is what it is. But, like, you can't compare it because international teams, you can't compare Mbappe and Haaland because Haaland... Is playing for Nor- Norway and Mbappe's in France, so you can't use that. The same mm-hmm. thing is the argument with Kane is Kane world class, he's never won anything. For me, yeah. it's like the definition is so vague, but I don't, I put world classes in someone who's unplayable in their position. Like, I don't even think there's a, a world class wing back or right back or left back that i can think of right now like just because you're the best in the world in that position or top three or whatever that doesn't that doesn't make it for me so everyone's got different definitions so it's always going to be an argument yeah that is also that argument that what you said that it's like my i I like to look at it sometimes like if this guy can play him if this guy gets into pretty much all he's a quality quality player and he gets into pretty much all the teams in the world He's world class if you want to use it like that. But I know what you're saying mm. as well. Henri was unplayable. Ronaldo was unplayable. Uh, Robin was unplayable. Saka hasn't like, reached that level, days. for example. Like he, he's persistent and he's very highly skilled, but he's not unplayable yet. But if he adds experience and confidence from winning the biggest titles, then you might find Saka plays a very different game once he he knows he can get past mm-hmm. the player. The defender has to defend him very differently. And what yeah. you'll find is Arsenal are going to start developing that fear factor. It's not fully there yet. It's starting to get there, but it's not mm-hmm. fully there yet. What City have, this fear factor where they get more space because people are scared when they come in. Like, they're scared of these players. Like, right now, it's still, oh, Arsenal, there's still the banter because we ain't won anything. We win one league once again, and the fear factor goes into every other team. And when they play us, they're like, mate, these guys are the real deal. Because these guys will convince themselves it's just Arsenal. Wow, they're flashing a pan. They're flashing a pan like all the fans mm. have done last season. It's a flash in the pan. That's why they're all they're all upset this season because they're seeing us and they're like, all right, we're in a flash in the pan. Then you've got people yeah. on other streams, Spurs fans saying, Oh, we're gonna finish above Arsenal. In what in what right in what world do you believe that to be true, bruv? Like you're just making theoreticals up in your head that's bullshit bruv that's like me saying that we're going to win the treble this year even though we're not in the fa cup or the carabao cup it's also uh it's also a little bit hope they're just hoping that we're still the the, the arsenal team of 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 the past you know what i'm saying and yeah exactly they hope that it's still there why the reason we haven't fallen off is though and it's something that's intangible and it doesn't matter if we win leagues or not at this point they can't take it away from us and it's signing the right players. And if you if you can do that, that is the difference between your team going bankrupt, your club going bankrupt, and you being relegated, or you always are going to be at the conversation at the top. If you are always making the right decisions with players and getting the exact pieces we need for the price tag we need, and those players want to come here, and you know it's all it's all gelling into a system which is self fulfilling almost. Um, I feel like that we've achieved that now. I've got total confidence in, in Edu and Arteta to pick whoever the right player is that they're going to bring in. And, you know, we've questioned pretty much every signing of theirs since mm-hmm. the start, right? And each one yeah. of them, even the most hated ones, we've kind of had to just go, well, fair enough. You, you know, I thought you were crazy, but you mm-hmm. showed us you know what you're doing. Listen, it wasn't perfect. Gante, Gante. No, no I'm, I'm just saying uh, it wasn't perfect, but it was enough to be where we are right now because we did mm-hmm. waste a little bit of money. You know, you know, the, the Nuno Tavares and the players like that. You know what I'm saying? We we had a few signings. Yeah, we had a list, that went but bad that list as well. Was yeah, smaller. Like I think yeah. uh, Congo was seen as a failure, but he's actually done pretty well at Luton. We'll probably get our money back or something like that. Like even our biggest mm-hmm. failures: uh, Tavares at six million, Cedric was free, William was free. You can't really fault any of the ones that they've spent money on except Vieira right now. I think his turn is mm-hmm. next to really 
Yeah. Show us what he's worth. Yeah, but the, the, those were starters at one point. You know what I'm saying? They weren't mm, bench players. They were, yeah. if, if they were bench players, well, fair enough. But they were starters at one point. You know what I'm saying? I think Tavares was a reluctant starter because Tierney and Zinchenko couldn't keep fit, right? But yeah, I, and I think we all had high hopes for Lokonga. But as yeah. far as all the other money we spent, the 590 million or you know close to a billion that Arteta spent, I, it's. I'm filled with confidence that that is something that you can get right, regardless of win loss, titles, no titles. Mm -hmm. and you just you just keep yeah, on. Think, Sorry, I think it's, it's all right, bro. Um, the thing for me as well, right before we wrap it up, uh, the signings from Arteta and Arsenal. I, I'm listen. I don't think there's not many teams that you can look through their history and say they've not fucked up signings, right? There's no one yeah. because you sometimes mm -hmm. you think you can do something and it don't pan out. Someone is doing well, then it don't pan out. So I don't think you can always hold it too much on them. Like, look, look, like I'm not gonna lie, look at Calvin Phillips. Yeah, look at that newness that they signed this season from Wolves. Not mm -hmm. that great. Like they've had yeah. their fair share city of not great players. Well, Liverpool look at city as well. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So Radio, like, at the end of the day, Kovacic, et cetera. Like, you know what I mean? So, like, at the same time, it's just that we haven't won that yet. Once you, once yeah, again, once exactly. you win something, you get allowed more. People allow mm -hmm. more once you've won because they're like, you know what? Fuck it. He's fucked up, but he brought us that Premier League, so we're still happy. You know what I mean? That's all that Arte mm. I'm telling you now, that's all Arteta needs, and he'll have 100% of the fact. I generally believe if we win a major honour, th there won't be any. Even the league gunners that people say, like, that say are toxic, league gunners and, and, and north side they'll be on our Arteta because the joy that it will bring them. Because mm -hmm. what you've got to realise is they're talking through pain. There's just levels to it. Like, there's me that can be a bit more level-headed, but, it, like, even T is a bit more, uh, like, in, in in this stream right yeah, now. I've seen it, bro. I've seen there's it. Martin, there's Martin, then me, then, then T, and that's the level of negativity towards the club. And it's not bad. I'm just saying T is a bit more negative than me. I'm a bit more negative than Martin, and Martin's a bit more positive than both of us, right? It's mm -hmm. just how you are as a person, how you see things and all that. If we win a trophy, they will all be positive, I'm telling you. They'll be pissed. They'll still mm -hmm. have their little thing when we don't play well. That's fine. But there won't be that same – there won't be the talk of sack and sack and sack him all the time. No. But, yeah. I don't no think more. of them as negative. I, 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 I would think back of them as fully. I, I think it's, it's not so much negative and positive, but I think there'll be less people – it's it's funny with a manager because you you it's it's like you've hired a a chef or someone you bring them into your life and then you either want them to stay forever or you want to sack them now and there's no in between in the conversation. So I think that as long as we can get away from the do we have to sack him now that that'll make things a lot easier. But do you know, do you know my point was more just about I mean? like oh yes. What? Do you know what happened though? The thing is, like, because I got a mate, and he's very much like when I when I talk to him, it's very much like when you listen to these guys that are deemed negative on the internet and stuff, right? Mm. What happened was these are people that are kind of negative, were kind of negative anyway, and kind of like I'm not sure about the manager and that. And then what happened last season was they all got drawn out. They all started getting gassed. They all actually thought we were going to win the league and started putting their neck out. And then we didn't do it, so they're really hurt now. Now they're really hurt. Do you get it? So I think that's what's happened. But like, mm -hmm. yeah, listen, we got to wrap this up. But mine, I'll let you finish that point quick and let T say what you had to say and then we'll wrap up. Remember when we had Wenger and it was kind of like accepted that he wasn't succeeding because he had his hands tied behind his back. And it felt to me like, you know, the goal was to get in the Champions, stay in the Champions League, get money, and then we'll be in the Champions League and players will want to come here because we're in the Champions League. It just felt like we mm -hmm. weren't getting the, the best selection of players. We'd get everyone's third or fourth choices i feel like we're in first choice territory right now and it's it's almost invaluable people won't look at it as a milestone or objective or whatever but being able to take rice under the nose of city for 100 million was like a huge game-changing moment for this club but I, I don't think it's really focused on at all but i think that's just because rice has come in and done such a good job so i'm i'm excited about the future for a whole bunch of reasons and i don't want to spend any more time than I have to discussing whether or not we should keep the manager or not keep the manager because I feel like we've we've kind of had our fun with that. It's been it's been a few years and uh and we're all getting old. So 
maybe maybe it'll be time. I think I think Arteta will walk before you know anyone tries to sack him. So I'm confident that that'll happen. If he's, yeah, I think if, I think so. Well, I think I think I think there's a lot of, like rival fans are very like push it the narrative as well um, of sacking him and stuff. Um, stuff yeah. so I, I feel like it's always tough but t gone yeah but just, just to add to that giuseppe lampard failed gerard is failing you know what i'm saying the the last thing they want is one of our old players to win a league with arsenal you know what i'm saying but uh, apart from that i agree martin i agree completely and um for me the issue was never arteta because the the people above him hired Arteta in the, uh, to begin with. Arteta mm -hmm. did a great job, so I, I applaud him for everything he's done uh, uh, for Arsenal. My issue, and I agree, Wenger had to go through it and deal with Stan Kroenke and his BS and uh, pay for the stadium and then uh, pay uh, and put that in Kroenke's pocket uh, 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 at the end. You know what I'm saying? And I think that all changed ever since his son took over from him. Ever since Josh Kroenke yeah. took over from Stan, like he did with the Denver Nuggets as well. The only thing, uh, the only club that he didn't do that with is the LA Rams because that's uh, Stan's uh, favorite. Uh, but ever, every club he took over be became a challenger or a champion at least. The Nuggets won uh, the chip, so they became champions. And the only club that is not a champion yet in their regime is Arsenal. Exactly. And yeah. ever since Josh took over from Stan, we look, uh, the whole philosophy changed and we looked more hungry and now we came challengers again. Stan, his was father, said for, for Baden. That was, uh, I think, under Unai, there was, I think, Josh came after Unai, I think, yeah, he did. if I remember okay. correctly. Yeah. So the one thing is Stan, his father, the original Kroenke, he said, I didn't buy Arsenal to win trophies. That's what he said. He saw this as an investment. He saw this as a money pig, to say that, a piggy bank. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And that's what he basically saw Arsenal as. And ever since his son took over like he did with the Nuggets, like I said, the philosophy changed, and now we're not only a money maker anymore, and we actually want to win stuff, and that's what I'm happy with. But uh, and that's why I'm saying my problem was never Arteta. My problem was always the Cronkies. But now they mm -hmm. fixed their BS. I can trust it a little bit more, because it, my problem has never been the coach, because whatever coach we had. We failed at the end, except Wenger, of course. But every coach mm. after that, we failed in the sense that we couldn't become those challengers. And with Arteta, we are slowly becoming that challenger. And I'm saying that's not only because of Arteta, that's also because of Josh Kroenke took over as well, and the whole structure changed. Vinay left as well, and I never liked Vinay. Vinay Venkateshwar, he left. He's still here, I think, and until the end of the season. But yeah, I, I hear no, but he's leaving. It's it's not all in yeah. his hands anymore. You know what I'm saying? And um, I just I just like the higher ups structure right now a little bit more than the past, because they fixed up a lot. And I just need that one title so I can back them fully again, like 100 mm. percent shameless, toxic, positive, whatever you want to call it. I would be it. I just need that one title, bro. That's the only thing. I was crunkies out as soon as the. Super League came around. I was kind of before that, but Super League kind of was the official nail in the coffin for me. So yeah, it's it's an interesting mm -hmm. thing how they're kind of tied together, but we don't really talk about them much anymore like we used to. Yeah. Yeah. But I agree with all that. It's yeah, Josh that deserves a lot of credit. It's great that we it's great we don't have to talk about them anymore. But yeah, listen, boys, uh, we're gonna wrap up now. Thank you for coming Sounds on. Good, buddy. Um We'll Thank get more streams, me, and obviously now I'm back. I'm going to be doing more streams. We've obviously got Goon the Lounge and stuff like that, so we'll all be talking a lot more. Um, yeah, listen, what can I say? It's not as bad being an Arsenal fan now, but let's see how it goes, man. We've got a long, long season ahead still. Um, uh, you keep that chest 
out and proud. We got this, boys. It's going to be yeah, easy. Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> but listen, people, make sure you there like, you share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, listen, support. We love the support. Support the boys. Uh, you know how it is. Um, yeah, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Peace. That is.